Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm bringing you a new series um, for this video tutorial for Java programming for absolute beginners. So I intend to start um, explaining how you can program in Java, specifically using Eclipse IDE, the Eclipse Integrated Development Environment to create simple Java programs. And then I intend to go ahead from there um, more, you know, more deeper into Java. So I, I'm using a couple of tutorial PowerPoint tutorials that I found in this very useful website called IB Computer Science Hub. It is a very useful website. It is an IB um, website for the IB curriculum that does have a lot of information for IB students, especially those doing computer science. But it also does have some very useful information for Java programming for absolute beginners. So before we start to look at the very first things that what we need to understand for Java, which I intend to cover in this video tutorial that focuses on variables, focuses on data types and strings in Java, and of course focuses on the environment that we're going to be developing our programs, which is the Eclipse IDE. First of all, guys, you need to go and download the respective um, Eclipse installer that you would like to install. I prefer to go with the 2019-06 one uh, version, but there's a new one that's come out, which is 2020-09. So you need to go to this website called um, Eclipse Org. And once you get to this website, www.eclipse.org, you can select um, the downloads that you want, packages, releases, and you can pretty much get what you need. So you just have to click on, it's a very straightforward process. If you have a Windows operating system, then you're going to click on e this um, X, X86. If it's a 64-bit Windows operating system, then you're going to go with the 64. If it's not, you can pretty much find the release for your particular operating system or package that will go with you. We're going to be using the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. That's the one you should have installed for basic Java learners like um, yourselves or anybody interested in learning Java. If you have Mac OS, um, it's the same as well. You just need to click and download. I'm not going to show the process of how to download or install Eclipse. I feel like it's something that is um, straightforward and you can find some resources online as well of how to do it. But once you click on any one of these installers and you download it, you just pretty much have to just click and follow the instructions that follow. And, and then at the end, they would ask you to create a shortcut um, and you need to say yes so that you can create a shortcut on your desktop. Like you can see here, I actually have the two versions. So the 2020-09 and the 2019-06 so that you're easily accessed. It will also ask you to create a workspace like where your Java programs will be stored in. So I suggest before you click on the, um, once you download the any one of these two installers, before you actually click and open to start the installation process, make sure you come and create a new file on your um, on your desktop, and that will be a file for where you would be having your workspace. So I currently have my own um, file on my workspace here, and this is pretty much where I have all my programs, which is in Eclipse 2019. So whenever I open up my Eclipse 2019, all my programs get to be stored in here. So it's better to create this folder and have it in there so it's easy for you to save your programs and know where they're saved. So once you've done that, you'll successfully see your icon being launched once you've um, installed Eclipse successfully. Remember that you should install Eclipse for Java developers ID. Um, the remaining ones are like for people a bit more ahead um, and C++ and C++ uh, developers. So we just want to do this first one for now because we're just starting with absolute beginners. So that's the first thing. So once you've downloaded it, just open it up and it's going to open up for you as a new program. So you pretty much wouldn't have anything in your packages because you haven't created anything yet. So I'm going to be doing a tutorial video guys today of how to be able to create a very simple program in Java, focusing on three important things, which means variables, how we declare and instantiate variables in Java, um, focusing on the different data types we have in Java and also focusing on strings. So I'm going to be using these PowerPoint slides as guide. I'm going to open the first PowerPoint slide that talks about um, why you need Java. So it gives you more detailed explanation of the different IDE um, int integrated development environments that you can use to create Java. So we have Eclipse, BlueJay, NetBeans. And then it talks about the three laws of Java. It says every line in Java must end with a semicolon. And of course, um, unless there's a, no a next symbol, which is the curly bracket, and every curly bracket must have a closing bracket. And all classes must start with capital letters, methods, and variables, which start with lower cases. So these are just basic rules that we need to be aware of when you're programming. Um, another thing is the syntax rules. Very important, um, both in Java and any high-level programming language, syntax is really important, and it's important that you abide the syntax rules, because if you don't, you're going to be having um, you know, problems when you're creating programs. 
So classes start with capital letters and they have no curly brackets. They have, I mean, they have no circular brackets, rather they have curly brackets. Methods start with lowercase and they have circular brackets after them. Variables always start with lowercase letters and equals to means getting the value. So you're instantiating. If you're saying X is equal to zero, it's not the same as saying X equal equals zero. Because when you use one equal sign in Java, it means you're assigning a value to a variable. But when you use two equal signs, it means you're comparing um, two values between themselves. And normally this goes more with numbers. So when you're comparing two numbers or two digits or whatever it is, but if you're comparing strings, then you're going to have to use this method called dot equals, and that's for comparing more strings. So Java structures, um, Java programs all have classes and they have main methods depending on what you're creating. If you're just creating a regular procedural program, then it's going to have a class and a main method because without the main method, and I'm going to talk more about the main method, um, it's called pu public static void main and string argument. Without that method, you, can, you cannot run the program. So sometimes in some situations when we're doing object-oriented programming concepts, which is later on, we're looking at encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction, polymorphism. These concepts, we normally create classes independent of the main method and the main method is separate. So we'll be looking at that later on, but for now we're gonna have our class, which is very important. And they exist inside of a container called our project. So we first have to create a Java project, then we create a package. So we can have, uh, it's, more, it's much better to have a package created than to use a default package. So it's just like another storage location for where you keep your classes, which is your programs inside. So all classes must have a main, and that's the main method I was talking about for you to be able to run the code. So this is a typical structure of how a Java program looks like. So we have public class my first time, and then we have the main method. Again, this public static void main string argument is the main method that we need to have to be able to run um, the body of the code, depending on what's inside of the main method. So in this case, we have system.out.println, and ln just basically means next line. So you're saying print this, and in the next line, print another thing. So you're printing X and in the next line you're printing XXX and in the next line you're printing more of X's. So you see the simple syntax of how Java looks like. There must be a class, there must be a main method for where the program needs to run. So more examples of Java class, they explain where the class name is, usually in front of the, the, the um, keyword called class, and then we, we see the main method as well. So they, here is just telling you that you shouldn't worry the the classes, every class is in an IDE and environment basically has a main method. So you don't need to disturb yourself about how the main method would run. And here it just talks about the levels of coding, um, which says to learn how to program can be difficult if you don't learn, learn it in the right order. So of course, just like when you are building, you're, you know, you're constructing a building, you must start with the foundation until you get to the very top of the building. The same thing happens for coding. We must go with the foundation until we get to the very top of our, you know, very top of program, should I say very advanced in programming more, that will go more. So you can't just jump into, okay, I want to learn how to do, inherit, you know, encapsulation in, in Java when you don't even know how to create an instantiated variable. So this is why I'm creating this video tutorials because I want to start from the very basic of Java programming up to the object-oriented programming concepts that we have in Java and how we use them. So um, now we're going to move to the next slide and the next one starts to talk about the variables and how we use variables in Java. So they're pretty much repeating the things that we've just seen now. So I'm going to skip that. So variables are used to store values. Normally, whenever we have a variable, whether we get the value from the user or we assign the value to the variable, the main purpose is to store value. So it's like you have a box and we put a value or something inside of the box. So the variable just stores the value that you would use later on in your program. So variables act like boxes and um, what is inside the variable can change a variable. Um, so there's a difference between a variable and a constant. For example, if you're asking the user to enter their age, anytime the program runs, then it's going to be changing in terms of depending what the user enters. So in that case, age is a variable. But if you say age equal to 24, it has become a constant because you've assigned a value to it and it doesn't change. So there's a difference between the two of them. In Java, we have five types of variables. We have strings, int, double, boolean, and caret. We're going to see each one of them. So why not just have one type? Because um, strings as they are, they occupy a lot of storage space. They're big enough. Um, they're big when, they when they're compared to the other data types like boolean and int. So to save spaces, we, um, we as, as they said here, we only use the box type 
that is just big enough to contain the, the value we want. So let's to, to kind of reduce the amount of storage space we use. So sometimes we have to assign and use other variables, but strings are one of the most common variables that are used in Java and we represent strings in speech quotes. So whenever you're declaring any string, whether it is a text or a number or symbols, they must be within speech quotes. Integer, we know it's all whole numbers. So whether these numbers are negative or positive, as long as they're whole numbers, they're, talk, they're um, known as integers. Doubles are any real numbers, numbers with decimal points. Again, whether these numbers are negative or positive, if they have a decimal point, they're considered as double type. Boolean is basically when you have a question that, or you have something in your program that, or you introduce a flag, by the way, guys, flag is like something that you control in your program that helps in controlling how much or how many times you want a certain you know programming line to run and stop so flags most of the time sometimes when we use them in in java there are a boolean type so you can say flag equal to true and then you say enter your name and then you keep saying while the name is equal to you know while x is equal to zero you keep asking enter your name until um something else and then flag turns false so boolean is just used for true or false um, so whenever you have a question that has to do with a true or false answer, yes or no, on or off, we use Boolean. So two option answers, we use the Boolean type. Care is also um, similar to string, only different care means just one character. So something like A3, as long as they're in a single speech code, not double speech codes, they're considered as a care. So here's some practice work that says what type of data is each of the following, and we know this is an integer, this one is uh, this one is um, double or yes double type, and this one is string, and this one is boolean, this one is also um, we can say it could be a string. This one is again um, double. This one is a string. This one again is we can consider this as an integer. So. Now we're going to be looking at how we can declare a variable and how we can instantiate a variable. Declaring a variable just actually says gives the name, like defining it. So if you want to create a program where you can add two numbers, then what you need to do, of course, is to declare the variable you're going to use. It depends if you want to use a variable or if you want to use a constant where you say int number equal to three. So that's both declaration and instantiation. If you want to use a variable where you ask the user to enter the number and then with those numbers the user enters, you're going to add them together. Then the first thing you're going to do is, of course, very importantly, is to declare the variable. So one way to do stuff is to declare a variable um, and then instantiating the variable means assigning a value. So now it's become a constant. So you can do that all in one line. You declare a variable. You must put the data type before you write the name of the variable you are declaring. So in this case, we're declaring a variable called number, which is of a type of integer, which means whole number. And then we instantiated it with a, var with a value of three. So we said equal to three. The same thing goes for strings, only the difference is we put them in speech quotes. And if you notice, we must close every programming line with a semicolon in Java. The same thing goes for character and the same thing goes for double. So both declaration and instantiation happen in one line. Instead, you can do them in separate lines, but to make it shorter and easier, we do it all in one line. So the same thing goes for Boolean. And here is a quick reminder that you need to be careful because sometimes true is actually not the same as true. True here is Boolean, true here is string. The same thing goes here. This is a string, this is a character. This is a string, this is a number. This is a string and this is a, bull this is a double type. And the same thing goes here as well. So you need to be very careful. Plus means you're kind of adding or calling the answer. So plus in Java is like when you're saying the answer is, and that's in speech quotes, and you say plus instead of comma, like we do in Python, if you're aware of how Python works. So again, there's a difference between this plus and you know this, this, um, this versus this. Okay, so these two things are not the same. This actually means to add, whereas this just means like a character you're including in a sentence. The same thing goes for this as in with this as well. So we need to be careful if you're adding two numbers, you're going to use a plus sign without putting it in speech or double in um, double quotes or single quotes. So here's a simple pro program. It says instantiate the variable called num, num equal, I mean, declare the variable called num and then instantiate it to a value of 23, then print it out. So we use system.out.print to print out the result and ln means next line. So print out 23 as a number, then print out num. If you still say num, it's still going to print out 23 because 
23. Num is instantiated with a value of 23. And here it says print out 23 in, in speech quotes. And that pretty much, again, is going to print out 23. The only difference is these two 23s are actually numbers, but this one is a, of a string type. So here is an example of what I said when you're adding two numbers in the case where you have to, um, you know, instant declare and instantiate the variable. In this case, we have created a constant now because we have declared the, the variable called num1. We've instantiated to a value of five. And so now it's a constant because it doesn't change, it's fixed. The same thing goes for num2, which has a value of 10. And so when we, we do this line of program and we say system.out.print num1 plus num2, automatically it's going to print for you 5 plus 10, and that will print the answer. And so here, when we do system.out.print num1 plus, so adding, so this plus here with this speech code plus is two different things. You're actually just saying print out num1, which is 5, and then add the plus sign in front. So it's not going to add like we did here because you put this. This addition was not in speech quotes, but now it's in speech quotes, so it's considered as a string. So it's going to actually write this as 5 plus 10. So just, you know, because it's a string value, the plus is not actually adding anything like the first print statement. Um, so here it says what went wrong, string number equal to 2 and zombie equal to um, 4. And now you're adding, you can't add a string and an integer type, so you're going to get an error, a syntax error. So because you said it's it's, it's um, string, uh, what will happen is when you, you say number plus number, so as in number, which is this 2 plus 2, it, because it's a string time, it's going to just join them together and give you 22. It's not going to add them because you're declaring it as a string you're an, and you're instantiating the variable as a string, the value as a string. But here, when you actually add them together, because you've already declared it, the variable called zombie as an integer and you've already instantiated the value as an integer, so it will actually add them together and give you eight. All right, guys, so I think we've done some pretty cool um, practice. I'm just going to check and see because I wanted us to do, so we've done variables and data types. I wanted us to look more on, um, I wanted us to look more on the um, string. So we're going to look at this third slide here. And this one pretty much just repeats what we've seen from the second slide about variables. And now they're saying, how do we get input from the user, from the keyboard, from the mouse, from the microphone, from the scanner? So there are some steps that we must do when we create a Java program. If you want to get an input from the user, that is from you know people who are going to use and run your program, well, one first thing is you need to import all the Java utilities that we have in the library. So we normally write this as import java.util.asterisk, which means asterisk means import everything before the main main method, which is what we saw public string um, argument, public string, public static void, uh, public string void main and argument. So you have to you have to import um, you have to import Java utilities, and you're gonna have to declare and use something called we call a scanner because you need to use a scanner whenever you want to get input from the user. And then you have to declare a, a variable that will be able to catch the input from the user, which is from the keyboard in this case when they're typing into um, data into the computer system that will change into a variable. So typically how it will be written um, like is first you need to import Java utilities like you see in this program here. Then of course you have your class automatically generated in Eclipse IDE which we're going to practice today. And you have your main method for where the program body is going to run. And so once you've imported all the utilities now you can create a scanner class and this scanner class would have a name so you create the object of the scanner class. And so we have the object called keyboard. So scanner keyboard, this is how you create an object of the class. In this case, the scanner class. Why are we doing that? Because we need to get input from the user. So we have to use a scanner class. And to use it, we have to create an object. So how you do it is you write the name scanner. And you give your object a name. They've called this keyboard. And then you write the keyword new scanner system in that is receiving input from the user. And here we have our system that all the print and it's asking the user the question as in when is your happy time and you have to specify what kind of re response you want to get from the user what kind of data type is are you going to get from the user. In this case they're saying they're declaring this um, this variable called answer of a string type so the user must enter a string. And so there is a there is a method that must go with string types whenever you ask the user a question and you want to get a string type response. You must use a method called dot next line to be able to get the input from the user when he presses it on the keyboard into a variable. 
So what you do is you say string answer equal, we can do this all in one line again. So here they just declared the, the variable that will be receiving the answer from the user, which is an answer. The name of the variable is called answer of a string type. And then what they did here was to get the input, to catch the input from the user's keyboard to a variable, to assign it to the variable, which is answer. So remember, we created the object for the scanner class and we called it keyboard. So we have to write it here again, because that's what's getting the input. Dot the method that is going to be used to to catch that input from the user. And in this case, it's next line because it's string. If we had asked them to enter a number, then it's going to be int answer. And here would be next int. The same thing happens if we've asked them to enter an answer with a decimal point that is of a double type, then it's going to be double answer. And here it's going to be next double. So it, it, there are methods that must go with the type of um, data type that you're requesting from the user. And here you notice that they're finally printing out the statement saying your happy time is, and then we're using the plus sign in Java to combine it with the variables, uh, which is answer. So depending on what they've written, it will reply, it will give them back an output with that answer that they've written. And uh, don't forget, we must end every programming line in semicolon. So input is best received as a string. So string anything, again, like I said, the method would normally use is basically uh, dot next line. So we always use that whenever we want to get a string input from the user because that's the method that converts the input that they're entering from the keyboard to assign it to the variable that is declared as a string type. If we wanted to convert a string to an integer, for example, you ask them to enter their age and their age that they've entered, you have declared a variable that will catch that input as a string type, but you want to convert it later on into an integer. So what you do is first you, again, you instant, you declare the variable and then you use the method next line to catch the input. And you notice I'm using KB because that's the, that will be the name of the object that you've used to, to create from the scanner class. And then if you want to convert this string, um, string which is called s number variable because it's it's of a string type, you want to convert it to integer, you're going to declare a variable again. So in this case, we have int num equal to, you're going to use this method called integer.parse int. And then in, this, in the circular brackets, you're going to specify what you want to convert to an integer type, which in this case, you need to use the variable name of s number. So if 123 was initially entered as a string, when you pass these two programming lines and methods you've used, it's going to have it as 123, which is a number. Um, so there are more examples here and more programs that they've given us. I'd like us to now work on a program where we actually get input from the user to be able to add two numbers together. So we're going to do that right now. OK, so we'll leave this on. So actually, we're going to do something as similar to what they've asked here. So the only difference here is they've just, you know, showed how to convert the string answer that the user enters into an integer. We are just going to directly declare the, um, the response we want from the user, you know, an integer. So we're going to run a program very simply. There's more of how to convert strings to double. Again, it's the same thing like integer. The only difference is you declare the variable of a double type and you use double dot parse double. So that's pretty much uh, the difference. Here we used integer dot parse int. Here you're going to use double dot parse double. And um, and then we have more symbols that we use in Java. When we want to add two things together, we use a plus, minus for minusing, uh, backslash for dividing, asterisk for multiplying, plus plus to increase by an by one. So if you want to say total equal to total uh, plus one, instead of writing it like that, you can just say total plus plus, which means you increase it every time by one. Minus minus means you decrease it by one. And the percentage sign actually means modulus, which means you're returning the remainder, not the divisor. So 12 modulus 5, 5 can go into 12 two times, that's 10. When you subtract it from 12, you get a remainder of 2. So this symbol does not actually return the divisor, like the final answer, as you would have with a division. It just returns a remainder. And there's more um, examples as to what students normally struggle with when they're doing, um, when they're programming. So here uh, is another method we call dot care at. So it's a function that we use to be able to find the index position of a character or find a character in a specific word. So care letter, for example, here we declare a variable of a care of a care data type, which we've seen before, and this variable is called letter. And we have a string already declared that is containing this uh, this uh, instantiated value of radio. And now we're trying to find the position of one particular character in this in this uh, word. So what we do is we use this function care at. So here we have device, which is the name of the string dot care at two. So what you're just telling the, the compiler is to go and find which character is on the position of two. So because the computer always starts to count anything that is stored as a string type, 
from or number from zero it doesn't start from one like we do from left to right it starts from zero one two three four so obviously it's going to return to you d here because d is at the second index position of where it's stored in the string called radio so that's pretty much how we um how we do care at so it's going to return to you d because that's where d is at in the second index position so there are more methods that we use for strings. We use the care at to find the character's position or return a character. We use the two uppercase uh, function to be able to convert a string to an uppercase and lowercase. And substring we use to return a string portion between two indexes and they give you more examples of how that works. So substring two six, so just to take out a section of this whole string in the second index position or sixth index position. Lengths, we use this one to be able to find how long a string is. And we also use it with arrays and we also use it with um, with more functions and linked lists in, in, um, in Java programming. So now guys, we're, we've talked a lot about this. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna try and create a program where we can um, ask the user to enter a number and we pretty much add the numbers and we multiply them together. So let's get going. So what we'll do now, guys, is we're going to go back to our Eclipse. And whenever you want to create a program in Eclipse, the first thing you're going to do is go to file and you select new and Java project. Then you give your Java project a name. So we're going to call this Java program one. And then you click next. And then you have your source folder, so that's fine. And all you have to do is click finish. Um, if you have this pop-up message about creating a module, just close it. You don't need to create a module for it, so close it. If you don't, that's fine. So once you close it, you get your Java project created. You have your source folder. It is always best practice to create a, to create a package. So that's what we're going to do. You're going to right click on your source folder and you're going to say new and you're going to select package. So package is just like a place where you can store um, all your in all your programs get to be stored in there. So it's more organized. So we're going to create a package. Package names usually start with lowercase. So we're going to call this package um, programming practice. And no spacing, as you can already see, guys. And then you click on finish. And it automatically creates for you a package for where your programs are going to be stored. So now we're going to create a new program. To do that, you're going to right click on your package, select new, and you're going to select class. And we're going to call this one program one. So that's what we're creating. And you notice that we um, they didn't ask us to. So they said normally classes start by convention with uppercase. So if, if you want to do it with an uppercase, that will be better. So our class is having a modifier of public. We are going to talk a bit more about these, uh, what modifiers are, but for now public just means that this class can be accessed by other classes. So we are going to now check the box to make our class have a main method so that we can actually run our program. So you noticed it was unchecked before. So make sure you check it in and make sure your modifier is set to public and just click finish. So once you've clicked finish, your class automatically is generated with your package name of where your program is going to store with your class name, which is called program one and with your main method. So we're going to delete. If you want to enter comments in Java, just to explain what you're doing, we always use this um, two, two backslashes and that means you're entering comments. So we're not going to enter comments for now. We'll do that a bit later on, but just, just to tell you how it works. First thing we're going to do, if you remember from the slide we saw, is that we the best practice is always to import Java util. So we're going to import java.util.asterisk so we have all the utility tools we want because we're going to be using a scanner class. So we're going to write import java.util. And we're going to use the asterisk symbol. Mm, let me just find it. There it is. And then don't forget to put the semicolon at the end. So semicolon at the end. Sorry about that. I'm trying to find that on. I need to change. Just give me a minute, guys. Change this to a different key. There it is. So now we have um, import Java. Oops, I'm sorry. We should put this. I'm going to put that not at the top right there, guys. I'm just going to put it at the bottom. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to delete this, guys, from here, because that's what I'm getting. If you notice, I'm getting an error. I'm going to remove it. Please put it not before the package, but after the package, right before the class. So that's the ideal position. So I put it here. So now it's OK. So if you get this yellow warning, that's file because we haven't used any utility tool yet. 
So just please make sure you put the import after the package. And now we're going to create our program. So now we've imported all the utility tools. We're going to start by um, creating our program. And the first thing we wanted to do is to ask the user to enter. Well, before we do that, we're going to have to create the object of the scanner class because that's what's going to catch the input from the user. So we're going to write scanner. We're going to give this object a name. So I'm just going to call it OBJ is equal to. So we need to put the equal sign is equal to new, and then we're gonna put scanner. And then in circular brackets, we're gonna put system, uh, so system dot in. And don't forget to close every single line with a semicolon at the end. So what we've done now is, is create the object for the scanner class, because we're gonna use this object to catch the input from the keyboard that the user is entering. So very simply, the syntax to create an object for a scanner class is write the name scanner with a capital S, and then write your object name, whatever name it is, equal, then use the new keyword and write scanner again, and inside you write system.in, which is used to get the this uh, function, or should I say this, Keyword is used to get the input from the user. So that's the first thing you need to do before you start asking questions. The next thing we're going to be doing is we don't want to just declare a variable and say num1 is equal to, um, you know, sorry about that, I went to the next line. We don't want to just do this and say num1 is equal to 5 and we're done and we're going to use this variable. We want to get a variable, uh, a value, sorry, from the user. So that's why we use scanner class. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask the question to the user. So we're going to say system.out. So this is where we display input on the screen. System.out.println. And then we're going to ask them to enter a first number. So we're going to do enter the first number. OK, so this message is what will be displayed to the user. And then, of course, don't forget to close with semicolon each line. So this first statement is asking the user to enter a number. So we have to be able to provide a code that will be able to catch the input now that we've created an object for the scanner class. So the next thing we're going to do is like we saw. So this um, type, we have to determine what kind of data we want to get from the user. This is going to be of an int type because it's a number. And we're going to say num1 equal. So we're declaring and instantiating. So num1 equal, and we're going to write the name of the object of the scanner class, obj dot. And don't forget that whenever you're catching input from the user, you have to remember what strings we said. If we're trying to get a string input from the user, then the normal thing we're going to be doing is to say, you know, string, uh, whatever it is, the variable name is that we're storing this answer from the user and equal to the object of the scanner class dot next line. So that, that function next line is the one that actually gets the string input from the user. But because we have declared um, the answer we want to get from the user as an integer type, and we've declared the name of the variable going to store that answer as a num1, and we said equal to the object name of the scanner class dot, we're not going to do next line because it's not a string instead, we're going to do next int. So once you do that, you're going to be seeing it already um, formed. Sometimes, sometimes it automatically just comes up for you. They actually show you in your Java Eclipse. So it's going to be next int. That's the um, method function or should I say function that we're using to be able to get an integer value response from the user. So, so we've done the first one, system.out.print, enter first number. We're going to repeat the same thing. If you want, you can copy paste the code from on top. So we're going to do system.out.println, and we're going to do the same um, thing that we did in the first one, only this time we're going to be asking them to enter um, the second number. So we're going to say enter the second number. And don't forget to put a semicolon. So again, we're going to instantiate, declare and instantiate a variable that will catch the second input from the user. And it will be of an int type because we're saying enter num second number. We're going to call this variable num2 that's going to store the second number equal to the object name, which is obj in this case, because we created the object from the scanner class dot next int. So it already automatically shows you the next int here. So you can just double click and you know, insert it and close it with a speech quotes, I mean with a semicolon. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add the two numbers together. So we have to also declare and instantiate a variable that's going to be adding and storing the value of the two numbers when they're added together. So in this case, we're going to do declare the variable called int answer and it will be its job is to add the two numbers and at the same time store them in the variable called answer. So we're going to say num1. And don't forget to put the plus sign. So num1 plus, oh, that's the asterisk sign. There, plus. 
and we're going to do num2. So you can do this as well with multiplication. It's still going to work. I mean, if you wanted to do a multiplication instead of an addition or you wanted to do a subtraction, whatever you do, it will still work. So in this case, we just want to do a very simple one, which is the addition. If you want, you can do again another one in answer two, and you can just pretty much say again equal to num1. So we're going to do a multiplication here times num2. Remember the symbols that we use when multiplying? And again, we'll close this. We can do another one where we can subtract the numbers together. So in answer, you notice I'm changing the variable name. So just so that there is no confusion. So I'm creating different variable names. The first one was answer, which is going to store the results of adding the two numbers. The second one was answer two, which will store the result of multiplying the two numbers. And the next one is answer three, which is going to store the result of subtracting the two numbers from each other. So num1 minus num2, and then close with a speech uh, semicolon. So now we're going to be printing all the answers. So what we're going to do is system, oops, system. So we're going to print the answers to the user. So we'll use system.out.println again. And this time we'll open the brackets. We'll put in speech quotes, a sentence telling the user that these are the answers. So we're going to say the answers, or we could say addition and answer. Oops, sorry about that. Addition, answer. And in front of that speech quotes for Java, we normally use a plus sign. So we, we're going to have to have a plus sign. Okay, so we'll use a plus sign. And we'll add another, uh, this time we'll call the variable. So the variable here we have is answer. Okay, so pretty much what you're saying is addition, answer, plus, and then, you know, you're calling the answer variable for the first one. And then we'll close it with a semicolon. And then we'll do the same thing for the next one because we're saying multiplication answer, subtraction answer. So I'm just going to copy this whole line just to save the time. So you can just copy. The only thing you're going to change is just the variable name in the sentence. So this time it's not going to be addition answer, but it's going to be multiplication answer. So this is what we want to display for the user. Multiplication answer. And we're going to call the variable, which is answer two. And then finally, we have the last one, which is going to be the subtraction answer. So this is not going to be addition. You change that, it will be subtraction. And this will store the answer three. So that's the end of the program, guys. Very simple. So now we're going to run it and see if it works. Actually ask us to enter two number, and we can. Um, it will subtract the two numbers and, and add them together. So we're going to run the program right now. It's always good practice to save your program, but it automatically does save. If there is an error in your program, you will normally see a red um, sign here by the left side of any programming line. If you don't have an error, then you're going to be fine. So let's click Run. And... There it is. So let me take my console up. So it tells me to enter first number. So I'm just going to say six. And then it says enter second number. I'm going to do two. And it gives me the addition six plus two, which is eight. The multiplication, which is going to be, um, again, uh, six times two, 12. And then the subtraction, which is going to be four. So one thing I want to say is in case if you, uh, let me just close this console. In case if you wanted to, I'm going to take this down. In case if you wanted to give spacing, because some people like to have spacing, you can add an empty speech quote. So you can do something like this. You add an empty speech quote in front of your statement and in front of where you want a space to be. And then you put the plus sign, of course. So now once you print out this answer, you're going to have a gap between the addition answer and the answer itself. So if you want to include spacing, this is one way you could do it. So again, you put empty speech quotes and you just add an, you know, plus sign. Again, the plus sign is pretty much adjoining what you're trying to display for the user. So again, empty speech quotes and then put a plus sign. And again, always give spacing. So that's just going to make everything looking good. So now you save it and let's run it again one more time. So we run it one more time. You're going to see that it's going to run with the spacing now when you give your, you know, when you give the number. So the first thing is enter number. I'm going to enter 12. Enter a second number, I'm going to enter 8. So you see there it's now spacing. The first one is the addition, which is 20. Multiplication, which is 96. And subtraction, which is 4. So that's pretty much how you do the first um, program. So I'm going to end this video here, guys, because I've already explained how we, we've already learned how to be able to declare instantiate variables. We've learned the symbols that we can use in typical, you know, arithmetic operations when doing in Java. We learned about the scanner class and how to get input from the user. And we've also learned of how to display the answer and include spacing. The next time we come, we'll continue from there onto the next thing, which is more about strings and calculations, if conditional statements and etc. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial and I hope to see you guys next time. Have a great day.